Hello friends and welcome to my channel. This past week I was looking through my lipstick collection and I realized how many really good matte lipsticks have been released over the past year or so. So I thought what would be fun would be to swatch all of these lipsticks for you. I have about 30 in my collection and to tell you what I think of them so that you can uh, think about whether or not there might be any that you might be interested in as well. Now I don't like perfume in my lipsticks so therefore none of the lipsticks that I'll be showing you have perfume in them and otherwise there's a pretty wide variety. So thank you very much for joining me and let's get started. Now first a little bit of information about me. I'm 58 years old and I have dry and sensitive skin. I've never had any cosmetic work done like plastic surgery or injections and I do not intend to ever do that. In addition I have such sensitive skin that I'm not able to use products like retinol or other kinds of harsh agents on my skin. So my goal is to find some really good skincare products that are more gentle as well as some good makeup products that help can help me to look a little bit fresher and maybe even a a little bit younger. Over the past two years I've tried out hundreds of different products and so I have a good base to compare new things to. Until recently I've been wearing pretty much only neutral or uh, light colored lipsticks but more recently I have started to think that wearing more richly pigmented lipsticks with a little bit of color in them can help me to my face to look a little bit fresher and uh, a little bit more vibrant so I've been experimenting more with using different colors of lipsticks. I thought I'd start out with a couple of tips for wearing matte lipstick. So the first thing that I think is really important and that has made a tremendous difference for me is to always use a primer when I before I put on a matte lipstick. So the primer that I actually personally like the best is from MAC. It's called MAC Prep and Prime. And if I put this on first, then the lipstick goes on much more smoothly and it feels less dry on my lips. Uh, this product does have silicone in it and it also has vanilla in it. So if you're con uh, concerned about those particular ingredients, then you might want to try this one from Anastasia Beverly Hills, which is unscented and doesn't have any silicone in it. I've also been interested in another product from Urban Decay, so I ordered that one, but I haven't gotten it in yet. I think that primers do work better usually than lip balms do, but some companies do say that their products are designed to be more like lip primers. So I recently ordered one from Pharmacy, so I will let you know how that worked out for me pretty soon. I also think that when you're wearing matte lipsticks, they can be helpful to use a lip liner because that can help to create a border for the lips, lipstick so that it's not as likely to go outside of your natural lip line. So if you find that that's an issue for you with when you're wearing uh, lipsticks, then you might want to try that. You might want to even put a, a light layer of the lip uh, liner all over your entire lips so that if your lipstick starts to wear off you will still be more likely to have a little bit of color on your lips. In addition, if you feel like your lipstick is too matte, then you may want to add just a teeny line, tiny little bit of gloss on top of your lipstick and that will give it a little bit more of a sheen. So what I'm going to do today is to start with the lipstick that I like the least and then count down to the lipstick that I like the most. Including in my rankings are a variety of factors including how the lipsticks felt for me, how they smelled, how they tasted, how well they wore, how they looked, uh, how long they lasted for me. So all of the performance type issues that you might consider. Also whether or not they irritated my lips. If they're going to irritate my lips I'm definitely not interested. What I didn't put in the rankings is the price of the lipsticks. So whether or not a lipstick is really expensive or really inexpensive, that didn't influence where on the list it is. In addition, I, except for the exclusion of fragrance, I didn't uh, take into consideration any of the ingredients when I decided where on the list uh, each lipstick would be. But I will, it, when it's appropriate, talk about the ingredients in the lipsticks in terms of uh, trying to explain why I had the experiences that I did with them. I probably should also mention that there are a few lipsticks that seem to be on the borderline between being matte and being satin and in some cases I've included those lipsticks here with the other matte lipsticks. Pretty soon I'm going to be doing another video I think where I swatch the rest of the lipsticks in my collection so hopefully you can subscribe so that you can make sure you see that one. 
So before I start out counting down, I want to bring up the idea that there's actually one lipstick that I purchased that I thought was going to be appropriate, but that ended up being disqualified. And this is a lipstick from Gwen Stefani, which is called Give, or G-X-V-E, uh, which is called the Give Original Me High Performance Matte Lipstick. And the reason for that is because I realized after I purchased this, and I just have this little mini version, uh, I realized that this actually has fragrance in it. And when I looked at the, uh, the Give website, it says that their products may have 1% fragrance in them, and they don't specify anything about what the fragrance is, so we're assuming that this is synthetic fragrance. Now this is concerning to me because it's actually listed as Clean at Sephora, but apparently Clean at Sephora thinks that you know, not just fragrance, but, but body products and makeup products, including lip products, can include uh, synthetic fragrance in them if it's less than 1% of the formula, which can be really, really strong because perfume is a very strong ingredient, obviously. So I don't think that that should be counted as clean, and that makes me really doubt uh, these companies in terms of what their definition of clean means. And I think that gives the whole concept of trying to choose clean products a bad name and a bad taste in people's mouths. So I tried on this lipstick, and I thought that it was irritating to my lips. It definitely had a very bad taste, and I wasn't that crazy about how it looked either. So I have tried one other previous product from this Give company. That was an eyebrow pencil, and that eyebrow pencil really didn't work for me at all. I basically could not get it to deposit any pigment at all on my eyebrows, and that is the only pencil that I have purchased, and there have been like 20 or 30 of them. That's been the only pencil that I purchased that I really haven't been able to use and that has been just an entire failure for me. So after these two things, I think I may be done with this line. But if there are any products from Give that you have tried that you're super enthusiastic about and that you don't want me to miss out on, then please let me know so that I can uh, think about whether or not I want to pursue that. Now the next product, which is number 29 on my list, is from Glossier, and this is the Glossier Generation G lipstick. And I talked about this product in my Glossier video. That is an older formula from Glossier. It hasn't been updated. It has a number of different ingredients in it, including just unspecified flavor. And I think that that is probably synthetic flavor. So even though it's, it doesn't have synthetic fragrance in it, I feel like having artificial flavor is almost as bad. And I did not like that lipstick at all. I thought that it looked very nice on my lips. It gives a nice uh, muted, soft blotted lipstick. But in terms of how it felt to me and how it tasted, I felt like it tasted just terrible. And that's really a little surprising because the other lipsticks from Glossier, the Ultra Lips, are ones that are among my very favorite lipsticks that I have ever tried. So I am hoping that Glossier will reformulate uh, that lipstick at some point in the future because it's very frustrating to me that they're selling something that's uh, really not up to par with uh, the, uh, some of the other products that they're selling. Now at number 29 is the Rose Incorporated Lip Sculpt, and I am swatching that in the color Beams. So I found this lipstick to be really poor in a variety of respects. So first, the first thing that I noticed is that the taste is very, very strange. It has a sucralose in it, but which I, I don't like. That's an artificial uh, um, sweetening agent. But it also, it just tasted even more strange than that. It, it I, I kind of thought at the time that it tasted like a sort of a mixture of uh, cocoa butter and vinegar, but really unpleasant and an unpleasant smell. And since then, it also has gotten to the point where this part of it just fell right out of the container. And when I put it on my lips, it looked really dry. And so all of these things were very unfortunate. I think the color is kind of attractive. But other than that, this lipstick is a kind of a total failure all around. And Sephora has had it on sale for a very, very long time. So apparently they got stuck with a lot of inventory that they are trying to get rid of. The next product is one that I purchased uh, quite a while back and then have since decluttered. So unfortunately I can't show that to you. But that, this is the Burt's Bees Matte Stick. 
Um, and this one was so dry that I could hardly get it to go on my lips at all, even when I was using a lip primer. In addition, uh, Burt's Bees uses all natural colors which, in their lipsticks, which is okay, but in, in the case of this, these particular products, I think that the colors are really bad. And it also has a natural f flavor in it, but one that I don't find to be very attractive. So Burt's Bees uses this natural flavor in a lot of its products, and you probably already know whether it's an issue for you. And some people apparently don't mind that flavor, but in any case, I didn't find this to be a very good product, so I certainly wouldn't buy this one again. Now the next product on my list is from a very, very expensive company called Keir Weiss. And I did not buy this product, but I did get it as part of a gift with purchase set from purchasing some other things from Credo. So you can see here it's in this really gorgeous and expensive case. And the case is refillable, so you can pull this out. So this would be good. But the lipstick itself I found to be really objectionable. And again, this is related to the fact that it has fragrance in it. And on the ingredient list, they just state fragrance without uh, elaborating on it. But when if you ask them about it, then they will state that this is all natural fragrance, but they won't tell you what it is. And they say that the reason for this is because it's proprietary. Supposedly, uh, this is a clean product, and they are stating that it qualifies as organic. Apparently, you don't have to be have all 100% organic ingredients in things in order to qualify as organic. And in this case, if the product does not have synthetic fragrance in it, then apparently organic considers it to be okay. But I found this product to be taste just terrible and to smell just terrible. And apparently this fragrance is something that Cure Weiss has taken to putting in all of their, many of their different products and that their foundation, for instance, used to be unscented, but then they just arbitrarily put this scent in it. I am not absolutely sure what it is. Someone told me that they were under the impression that it was chamomile related. So that could be part of why I am uh, particularly finding this offensive because I think I might be mildly allergic to chamomile. But I think that a company that's claiming to be clean and that's charging this much money for its products should be more transparent in terms of what is in it. And just because something is natural doesn't mean that everyone, particularly people who are sensitive, are going to be able to tolerate it. And the other thing is that to my knowledge, the last time I looked at the website, Curewise said that they would not take back any products that were opened and that therefore if you buy the product and you're surprised at the fact that it has an objectionable ingredient in it, that they won't take the product back either. So I think all of these things are way beyond the pale in terms of how a responsible company, whether or not clean or, or dirty, I think that this is just not how a good company should be acting. Uh, I did, I've tried a few other products from Cure Weiss over time. I tried their blush, which was okay. I tried an eyeshadow, which was not that impressive. And I tried their compact foundation, which was not supposed to have fragrance in it. And it didn't seem to have fragrance, but it irritated my skin anyway. So these products are all really expensive, and I just find it to be amazing that companies can charge that much money for products and have them be uh, have so many bit problematic business policies. So if anybody wants to tell me any other products from Cure Weiss that you think I should try, then please let me know. But again, this is a company that I really feel like I'm about ready to give up on. Now the next product is from Ilia, and this is called Ilia Color Block. And I have the shade Amber Light. Uh, this product, I think it's pretty, and I think the color is especially pretty. Uh, I would like to figure out uh, what other colors of blush I might have that are that color, because I think this makes a, a really good blush color in particular. Uh, but this product includes a variety of natural processed fragrances, which are known to be irritating. So again, it includes unspecified natural fragrance, benzyl alcohol, limonene, geraniol, citronellol, and linalool. And then it also includes benzyl benzoate, which is a preservative that I think is irritating to me. Um, this is an older formula of lipstick. I think it's been out for a number of years. 
And uh, Ilya, I don't think, has reformulated any of their products from what I have seen. And I think that what was considered to be a, a good quality product five years ago is really lagging uh, now that so many other really, really good products have been released and products that are perform a lot better as well as have better ingredients lists. And so I think that in general, Ilya, uh, for most of their products, uh, a lot of them are just not keeping up with how things are moving. And they are still very, very expensive, like they're just as expensive as, as any of the other newer and better products. So I think that they're, they're falling behind a little bit and they have some catching up to do. If you don't mind um, different kinds of fragrance, uh, f natural fragrance, but uh, things that are pretty strong in a lipstick, then this could be one that, that might work out for you. But again, I think it's pretty expensive for what, what the uh, value of the product is. So the next product is from Rose Incorporated. This is another product from them, and this is not quite as bad as the other one, but I've had some issues with this also. This is called Satin Hydrating Lipstick, and it is in the shade Besotted. So I don't feel like this is as terrible of a formula as their other lip product, but it does have a couple of ingredients that are problematic in it, including rose geranium oil and then also citronellol. Now, rose geranium oil is just something that I'm plain allergic to, even in really, really small amounts. So I can't tolerate it in skin products, and I also um, am not happy when it's in lipstick products. So if you don't mind rose geranium oil, and that is something that you would like in a lipstick, then this could be a good product for you. The one good thing about this product, it's in a refillable package and it's not a really expensive refillable package. It's uh, very light, and uh, so I think that that part is nice, but in general, I think that uh, probably lip products should just not have uh, fragrance in them, and especially fragrance that has a weird taste to it. So at number 23 on the list is the Burt's Bees Matte Lip Crayon in the shade Niagara Overlook. So I think that of the tinted uh, lip products that Burt's Bees makes, that this is really the only one that I would consider using at all. And one of the main reasons for that is because it doesn't have any natural flavor in it. And it feels uh, reasonably clean to me, more so than most of the other products. I think that this product goes on pretty easily. I don't think that it looks as good, or, and I don't think that I feel as great about using it as I do many of the other good products that I have tried recently, but I do think it's a lot better than most of the Burt's Bees products and certainly better than most drugstore type products. So if that's the price tier that you're looking for, then this could be something that you might want to look into a little bit. Burt's Bees does use all natural pigments, so it doesn't have any artificial synthetic colors in it. So I think that that might be one reason that I'm not that crazy about the looks that I get from these products, but if you're looking for something with all mineral pigments in it that's not too expensive, then this could be something to consider. Now at number 22 on the list, we have the MAC uh, Retro Matte Lipstick in the color Ruby Woo. So this is, a, I guess it's an older matte formula, that's why it's called Retro Matte. And they just make a couple of lipsticks in this particular format. But one of the lipsticks that they sell in it is one of their best selling products, which is the shade Ruby Woo, which is a blue red lipstick that supposedly any woman can wear. So after looking at the ingredients list for this product for a while, I felt like the, the ingredients list is, were not as good as most of the other MAC lipsticks. Sticks. And in addition, it has, it's known for having a really good drying feeling to it because it has kale and clay in it. But I finally decided because this is so popular that I should give it a try. And I don't think it turned out to be as bad as I thought. I was actually able to wear it and it, it worked pretty well for me over the MAC lip primer. So I think that this is a, a very nice shade. Uh, fortunately, now MAC makes the same shade in a variety of other kinds of formulas. So I'm more inclined to be using that rather than to ever use this particular lipstick. So that's why it's ranked so low on my list. But in general, it's a very iconic formula and I feel like I could do worse and that if I were to wear it on occasion, it would be uh, not the worst thing in the world. 
Okay, counting down to number 21 would be the Bobbi Brown Art Stick. And the reason that I picked this up is because it, I looked at the ingredient lists for the Bobbi Brown site, and this was the only product that was like a lipstick at all that seemed like it had potential in terms of the ingredients. So if it didn't have fragrance in it and didn't have other things in it that looked really problematic for me. So I gave it a try, and now I have two of these pencils, one in this bare color and another one in the dusty pink shade. I think that this is kind of a nice pencil. I think it probably was released 10 or 15 years ago, so it's by no means new. Uh, I don't think it has uh, really any problematic ingredients in it. I will. It's a wooden pencil, and it's huge, and so you sharpen it with a really large pencil sharpener that it comes with. And uh, I think that it's a little bit smeary if I'm not really careful when I put it on, but I really like the texture of it. And I think it does uh, look, uh, allow me to create a nice defined lip pretty easily. I think that the taste is okay, except I think it tastes a little bit like the wood from the pencil. So that's a little bit uh, slightly off-putting to me. But in general, I think that m compared to pretty much most of the products that Bobbi Brown makes, uh, that this is one of their better ones. There's a couple others that I have liked also, but most of the products on that site uh, do seem to be uh, ones that I end up regretting if I try them out or purchase them. And then counting down to number 20, this is a lipstick from a company called Ma Beauty. And I happen to have this matte lipstick in the shade M93, which is also called Michelle. So this is a company that sells refillable lipsticks and the case only costs five dollars and I have one of those cases around somewhere. I just don't happen to have it here with me right now. But it uh, it looks like this and it's a brand this is a brand new company that is selling on Credo and maybe other places. Oh and also at Beautylish. And it is founded by a couple of people who were actually responsible for founding MAC back in the 1980s, if you can believe that. So one of the people is uh, one of the former owners of MAC that originally started the company. And the main person who's responsible for it is a makeup formulator who started at MAC when he was uh, right out of college. And so they are, uh, they're very interested in creating products that have uh, more environmental sustainability and that also have cleaner ingredients. So I have really, really liked some of these companies' products. I really, really like the powder products a whole lot. I think the highlighter has been fantastic. I think the blush has been very nice. And I think the eyeshadows have been really, really amazing. Uh, especially for the price and especially because you can mix and match the colors that you want into your own palettes uh, and the, the quality of the shadows are very good and they don't have talc in them and they're they're pretty much designed for mostly for professional makeup artists as was a Mac originally but I think that they're perfectly um, a very good choice in terms of some of these products for individual consumers as well. I think their cream products, like their cream highlighter and cream blush, I think that those have been okay. I have had real problems though with, uh, with at least some of the lip products. So the tinted lip balm, I ordered one of these from Credo. It came, it was totally melted and unusable. I wrote to Ma Beauty, they sent me another one and that one was melted and unusable also. So I, and this one I think is um, not as bad, obviously it is usable, but I don't think that this is the most attractive lipstick that I have seen. So this particular color was chosen by a woman who is a makeup artist, who has a TikTok following and a YouTube following. So I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with the color. I wouldn't object to that. I just don't think that personally that it looks as good on my lips as many of these other products that I have tried. So you can tell me what you think of it. Their cream lipstick was better than this matte one and it certainly was a lot better than the lip balm.
So counting down to number 19 uh, would be the Well People Optimist Lipstick, and I have that in the shade Soulmate, which is a lighter shade. Uh, this is described on the website as being a hydrating lipstick, but I have not found that to be the case at all, and quite a few of the other uh, reviewers agreed with me. I think it's much more like a matte lipstick in terms of the appearance of it and also in terms of how dry it feels. They claim that it's hydrating, and I wouldn't say that, but I do think that it's a fairly clean lipstick. It's a fairly low priced lipstick and I think it's, it's certainly not objectionable and I kind of like the way it looks on me. So if, uh, if you're looking for a, a more budget type of a lipstick, this could be one that you might consider. So the next product won an Allure Best of Clean Beauty Award in 2022 and so I just got this. This is from the company Airy Perez which is from Australia and this is called the Coco Crayon and I have this in the color Heart which is a bright red color. So I think that this is a, a clean product. Uh, I've always found all of the Airy Perez products that I've used to be quite clean. I do think that it's a, a little on the messy side and that in terms of how it looks, I don't think it's giving all that refined of a look. It might be that if I chose a different color other than this bright red, that maybe it would have worked out better for me. But it's not a bad crayon and I think that in terms of how it feels, I think it feels really clean. So that's a, a positive thing. Now counting down to number 17 is the uh, RMS Wild with Desire lipstick and I have this in the shade RMS Red. This is an orange red shade and I think that this lipstick may be uh, at least a decade old. I mean not this particular lipstick but this this uh, line of lipsticks uh, that and I think that the, the reason that RMS created these lipsticks is because their founder, Rosemary Swift, wears red lipstick every day. And I think she mostly wears this color lipstick. So uh, they wanted to create a lipstick, obviously, that was uh, quite similar, I think, to the MAC matte lipsticks. I don't think it, it performs as well in terms of how well it goes on. It's a little bit, I think it's probably considerably cleaner than the older versions of that lipstick, but that lipstick's pretty clean now too, the MAC matte matte lipsticks. So I think that this one is not too bad and I don't mind wearing it, but I don't seem to reach for it very much because I don't feel like it's really giving me uh, exactly the look that I want if I go to all the trouble of wearing red lipstick. It does come in several other shades and I've tried a few of those in samples as well. I, In general, I really like the RMS brand, uh, but I think that this is probably one of their uh, more difficult products at this point. So counting down to number 16, I have the MAC Powder Kiss Lipstick. And this is a silicone lipstick, so that makes it different than all of MAC's other bullet lipsticks, which don't include silicone. It's a matte formula, but it's a little bit on the lighter shade side uh, compared to the other uh, heavier matte and satin lipsticks. In addition, this lipstick uh, does not include vanillin, so this is the only MAC lipstick that doesn't include vanillin. Instead, it includes unspecified flavor, and it also has BHT in it. Uh, this is a lipstick that's also supposed to be hydrating, so it has sodium hyaluronate in it, uh, but it also has a kale and clay in it. So it has a lot of mattification to it, but it's also supposed to be at least a little bit good for your lips. I have this in the color Sheer Outrage, which is, uh, I think it's supposed to be a dupe for the Revlon shade of, that was called um, Pink in the Afternoon, which is associated with the movie uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's. And I think this is a really pretty color on me. I really expected not to like this lipstick because it has uh, the unspecified flavor in it and it also has saccharin in it, but I don't mind wearing it too much. It's a little bit sweet. Uh, I wouldn't want to wear it every day, but it's not a really unappealing lipstick to wear uh, in terms of making me want to take it off right away. And I do think it looks pretty on me. So I think that this could be one a lipstick to consider if you want a lightweight uh, silicone lipstick that performs pretty well. 
So now let's count down to number 15, and this is the MAC Matte Lipstick. And now we're getting into the territory where there are lipsticks that I not only am willing to wear, but that I actually do wear on occasion kind of voluntarily. So these are actually you know, certainly iconic lipsticks. Uh, they've been around for a long time, and they've gotten a lot of publicity, and they are, I think, maybe one of the, the most popular lipsticks in the U.S., especially in their price point. Uh, the, I have three different colors. I have a Velvet Teddy, which is kind of a pinkish beige color that was made really famous by the Kardashians and at least for a time was the best-selling lipstick in the United States. I also have the shade Chili, which is another one of MAC's most popular lipsticks. It's a little bit of a brick red type color, I think. And I have the, the shade Mare, which is sort of a pinkish brown color. And I think that these are uh, these these lipsticks really have a function. Uh, they don't have any silicone in them. They just have the vanilla as the flavor. They uh, actually have a an ingredient list that is clean enough that they would uh, perfectly easily qualify for uh, being sold as clean at Sephora or as a, a Credo product. So I think that uh, the good thing about these lipsticks is that they really do last for quite a long time. So if I put them on and I put them on with enough uh, uh, layering, especially if I put a little bit of lip liner on with them, they will really stay for, for a good many hours. And even if I eat and drink something, they still stay in place pretty well. So that's a, a very good thing with regard to a lipstick. I don't find them to be unpleasant. They are on the drying side. Uh, so again, they're, they have a, a lot of drying type ingredients in them. But I find that if I I absolutely must wear a lip primer under this, so I, I usually use the MAC one, but one of the other ones that I mentioned uh, also would do. And I think that uh, if I use the lip primer and if I use a little bit of lip gloss on the top of it, I feel perfectly fine about wearing these lipsticks on occasion. It's not something that I personally would wear every day, but uh, they do have such a wide variety of colors. And it is so easy to find a proper shade because they have a, uh, a computer program on their website where you can upload a picture of yourself and then they will show you what uh, it looks like with different lipsticks on. So I think this is much easier than either trying to guess or going to the store and trying on lipsticks. And I think that if you're looking for a lipstick that really will look nice on you, this is a, a very accurate program and will give you a, a good sense of that. So I, I have a lot of good things to say about these lipsticks and I uh, continue to use them on occasion. And then very, very similar to the MAC Matte Lipsticks are the MAC Satin Lipsticks. So it's possible that these may be slightly more easygoing or have a tiny little bit of a sheen, but it's such a small difference, at least for some of the colors, that I don't think it's even worth bringing up. Uh, the, the shades that I have in this are Good Health, which is kind of a peachy, pinky, uh, pretty type color, and Twig, which is another pinky brown color. It's pretty close to that mare color. I think that, uh, again, these are, these are lipsticks that I have enjoyed wearing. Uh, they, if you look in the uh, MAC Satin lipsticks, uh, it gives you a wider color range, so you have some more options to choose from rather than just limiting yourself to the matte lipsticks if, if that's what you're looking for. And so I thought that I would just bring those up here rather than uh, putting them in a separate video with other supposedly satin lipsticks because I think they are so saturated and there's so little sh shine or gloss that they really have more in common with these matte lipsticks than uh, most of the other lipsticks in my collection. Now, next on my list is the, uh, I think this is still the number one lipstick in the United States, or certainly the number one luxury lipstick, which is Charlotte Tilbury uh, Matte Revolution, and I have it in the iconic shade Pillow Talk. So this is a lipstick that uh, is one of the first lipsticks that tried to be matte, but that tried to be a little bit softer and easier to wear. And I do think it's a lot easier to wear than the MAC lipsticks. I don't necessarily have to put lip uh, palm down or, or lip 
lip primer down. And I think that it, it feels good on my lips and it, it wears pretty well. So I think that as, as lipsticks go, this is a pretty good one. It does have some silicone in it. It also has some BHT in it, so some people are concerned about that. Uh, EWG used to be less concerned. They used to only be giving it a three, but now they've changed their mind and now they're giving it a five. Uh, you can still get uh, items that are clean at Sephora that have BHT in them as long as they have small amounts of it. I kind of would prefer not to have BHT in my lipsticks, but on the other hand, the, the BHT is a fat preservative, and so if you want your lip lipsticks to last for a while and not go bad, there's, there's a reason for it to be in there. So I don't object to that all that much. It also has vanilla in it, but the flavor is not too strong. And I think it's pretty on my lips. They do make a, a variety of other darker shades that probably these days I would prefer. I really like this when I got it, but as time has gone on, I really feel like, especially looking at myself in these videos, that I'm looking better when I'm wearing darker, uh, brighter colors of lipstick rather than this nude one. So if I were going to buy another lipstick from Charlotte Tilbury, I would probably buy a different color than this one. But I don't know that I'll buy any more of those. I don't feel like necessarily they're giving me anything these days. The other lipstick brands that I like better are actually uh, able to give me even better. So I think this is a good lipstick and I like it, but it's awfully expensive. And I think that that is another deterrent from me buying another one of those. And then counting down to number 12 is another lipstick from Charlotte Tilbury that I happen to own, which is called Kissing Lipstick. And I have this one in uh, the color Nude Romance. This is actually a refillable um, container, but unfortunately Charlotte Tilbury doesn't have that many refills to put in the container, only a few shades. And I, again, I'm not sure if I need to have any more Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. Uh, but this one is, it does not have silicone in it and it does not have BHT in it. So if you're concerned about either of those things, then this would be a uh, alternate line to think about. I feel like the performance on this has been just as good as the Matte Revolution format. It looks pretty much the same to my eyes in terms of what the lipstick looks like on my lips. And it's it feels pretty much the same and it tastes pretty much the same. So all things being equal, I think that this one, uh, I kind of prefer just because of, of the BHT issue, but it, it's really very, very similar to the Matte Revolution one. And it does come in a variety of different colors, uh, just like the Matte Revolution one does. Now counting down to number 11 is a lipstick by Honest, and this is called the uh, Honest uh, Demi Matte Lip Crayon, and I have this in the shade Fig. Uh, the reason that I like this lipstick is because it really tastes and feels good to me. So it's moisturizing and it has uh, real fruit extracts in it and a real vanilla flavoring in it and no artificial tastes and it feels good. It feels like it's moisturizing when I use it. So I like it for all of those reasons. It's also very economical. Uh, like most products from Honest, I think it's a, a quite good deal. And there haven't been very many products from Honest that I have tried and not uh, found to be really good, although there are a few. Uh, this product is right now, there's, there's only one shade left on the website. There used to be a whole bunch. So I kind of am uh, suspicious that they may be discounted continuing this product. And the downside, I think that this product is a little bit on the messy side. So uh, I would not wear this if I wanted my lip to look really nice. I would more wear it if I was I don't think a messy lip is necessarily a bad thing, and that's kind of a, a French thing too. That's something that I really focused on when I did the, the Violette FR uh, video on uh, um, French girl makeup, that I think that a messy lip can, messy red lip or a messy dark lip can be a little bit attractive. So the idea that this is not, might get a little bit messy on my lips is not really off-putting to me. It doesn't usually look that bad once it gets on. Uh, so I'm kind of fond of this and I'm a little sorry uh, if, to see that they might be discontinuing it uh, because it, it does taste and, uh, and smell and feel really good to me. And it looks pretty. Number 10 on my list is the matte lipstick offered by 100% Pure. So this is a brand that offers 
products that are made only out of natural ingredients. They don't use any artificial colors and they rely rather than so much on mineral pigments, they rely more on fruit pigments. So this is a lipstick that I have, I've had it for quite a while now and it's still feeling good to me. So sometimes their products do go bad uh, fairly quickly because they're not using any preservatives in them, but this one's still feeling good to me. It uh, is flavored uh, very nicely with some fruit extracts, so that's a nice thing. And I think that the color, maybe it could be better on me. I think across the board, that 100% pure, that they do have some difficulties with their colors and that they don't uh, look as appealing to me as colors of uh, products that have artificial colors in them. Maybe that's just uh, what I'm used to seeing. Uh, in any case, I think this is a pretty lipstick. I tend to especially like wearing it when I put a little bit of gloss on top of it, uh, but uh, it certainly looks has it gives a kind of a classic matte look when you don't put gloss on it. So I, you know, whenever I take this out, I always feel like I should be wearing it more, and I kind of wear it briefly, and then I kind of put it away again. So this is not in my list of top tier lipsticks, but I do think it's very nice, and it's something that that. It, I'm not always willing to consider all the products that 100% Pure makes, but I think this has been nice for me. I like it. And then counting down to number nine, I have the NARS uh, Soft Matte Tinted Lip Balm. And I have this in the shade Unrestricted. Uh, the idea with these lipsticks, they're, I think they're limited edition still. And they only have uh, maybe five colors or so. And the idea is that uh, they're the color of people's natural lips. So you can choose a color that's the same as your natural lip color, or you can choose one that's a little darker or a little lighter if you want. And uh, But it, it looks like uh, very natural and pretty, and it's sort of the texture of your natural lips as well as the color. And I have really liked these, this lip balm. I, uh, I do think that it, it, this is just a little bit darker than my lips, and I don't find it to be unappealing at all. It has a vanilla in it, so uh, that is something that, all things being equal, I would prefer not to have in my lipstick, but it hasn't been too bad. And overall, I think that NARS is making quite a few products now that, uh, that are, uh, in terms of the ingredient list, that are really, uh, I feel fine about. And then when I've used the products, I've actually felt fine about them. So com I think that in a lot of cases, they're... Uh, they're more acceptable to me these days than a lot of products from clean beauty companies. So I am really happy to see that because I think that this is something that's really needed in the beauty industry. Counting down to number eight, we have the Violette FR Bizu Balms. Now I talked about these in my video on Violette FR. These are uh, lipsticks that are supposed to be uh, really casual and easygoing that you wear either on an everyday basis or that you might wear uh, when you're wearing a really uh, dramatic type of an eye look. So one thing that I learned about uh, French people from that video is that uh, they tend to either wear a bright red lipstick or they will wear uh, a lot of dramatic eyeshadow, but they won't do both of them at the same time. They're trying to focus attention more on one part of the face and have it be more um, casual looking rather than a full face of really dramatic makeup. And I'm kind of in agreement with that in terms of my own aesthetic. So there are just four colors of these, these little balms and they're matte, so they're supposed to be kind of the texture of your, your own lips. I found this shade Calison to be almost exactly my same lip shade, so it's really very similar to that NARS uh, product that I just talked about. But I do have one that's uh, on the bright side as well. So this one is, gives my lips a little bit of color without being too dramatic. Again, these lipsticks do have a lot of vanilla in it, so I don't find it to be really problematic. I, and they're a little bit drying, but again, if I put it on over a lip primer, then I don't have any problem at all. So you shouldn't expect them to be hydrating your lips just because they're uh, easygoing and casual looking. But I, I kind of like them. I haven't uh, gotten a huge amount of use out of them, but I have a lot of different lipsticks, and I think these are nice. And then counting down to number seven are the Ritual Defeat 
lipsticks. Now, Ritual de Fee is a company from California that uses all natural ingredients in their products. And they are using also all natural colors, but they seem to have a real eye for color. And so the colors that they come up with sometimes are even more gorgeous than the ones with the um, artificial colors in from other companies, at least in my own opinion. Uh, they have two different kinds of lipstick lines. So one of them is a straightforward, ordinary lipstick line with the colors that are moderately bright, uh, and some of them are uh, a little bit on the, the more muted side. But in any case, they're colors that, that I personally find easy to wear on an everyday basis. Then they have a second line that's called Forbidden Lipstick, uh, which has lipsticks in it that are uh, sort of more vampy or more goth. Or This company kind of has a, a witchy type vibe to it, which I'm not sure. Uh, I, I think it's kind of like the same concept as Urban Decay. It's more like a conceit rather than something that, that I'm taking real seriously. But in any case, I think that these are, um, they're, they're nice lipsticks. They come in these tiny little tubes. Uh, which is why they're not too expensive. This is, this is actually kind of a luxury brand. The, the thing that really startles me about these lipsticks every time I use them is that they're very uh, strongly scented with lavender. And I don't object to that, and my, my lips don't object to lavender. And I feel uh, that uh, they're, they're pretty good for my lips when I wear them. But it, it does have a, a pretty strong smell, so you have to be kind of uh, anticipating that if you're not going to be surprised. And not everyone likes lavender lavender. You know, I think that the lavender is used as a preservative, and as preservatives go, I think this one may be one of the better ones. So I don't mind the, sp the smell specifically for that reason. I think that these lipsticks are very pretty. I think they're fairly easygoing. They're a little bit more hard than many of the lipsticks in my collection, but I think that they last pretty well on my mouth. Uh, when we get into the brighter colors, like the reds, uh, what I tend to find is that they evaporate really fast. And this is the case with all naturally pig pigmented lipsticks, I think, that uh, if you want a bright red lipstick that's going to stay with you all day, uh, that probably you're not going to get that from natural uh, lipsticks, that the carmine, which is made from beetles or other kinds of natural ingredients, just don't last that long. So you're going to have to be reapplying it on a regular basis. But it does feel good to me, and I've never had any problems with any of the uh, Ritual Defeat pro uh, products irritating my skin or my lips. And so I'm a big fan of this brand in general. Now, counting down to number six, I would uh, put the Kosas lipsticks. Now, these are not exactly matte. They're on that borderline between uh, being matte but with a little bit of a sheen to them. But I think that for a lot of reasons, they kind of more belong in this category. They're lipsticks that uh, tend to have really rich pigmented colors, and they hold up really for a long time on the lips, and they tend to have uh, really... Uh, uh, more of a sturdy type of a vibe to them. So whereas a lot of the pr products that I've been wearing recently have been uh, lipsticks that don't really feel like lipsticks and feel more like lip balms, these feel more like a, a lipstick. So if you're not a lipstick wearer, then probably you won't be real happy with these particular lipsticks either. Uh, I think that these lipsticks were made uh, kind of famous by Gwyneth Paltrow, who uh, said that this was her favorite lipstick for a while and stocked it on the Goop site. Uh, she wears the color Royal, which is kind of a purple color, or that's the one that she said was her favorite. I happen to have the color uh, Vegas, which is a, a brown color that's only sold on the Kosas site. And I like it on me, but again, this is one of those things where I'm thinking maybe I'd be better off if I were uh, to choose a brighter shade. So Kosas will give you a little package if you pay a small amount of money uh, that will give you samples of all of the colors of lipstick. So I think that's a really great thing. And I've tried them a number of times and I really felt like all the colors of those lipsticks looked okay on me and I just wasn't sure if I was ready to wear bright colors or not. But I'm kind of getting to the point where I would like to be wearing bright colors. 
but I see on the Kosas website that pretty much all the co colors are going out of stock and the product is also not in stock on Sephora or on Credo. So my guess with this is that they're probably reformulating it. It's been one of their more popular products over the years, but uh, it will be interesting to see if they do reformulate it and if so, how the formula is different. Now counting down to number five is the Wesman Atelier uh, lip suedes. Uh, I have this in the color Les Nude, but it also comes in uh, a red palette of several, four different kinds of reds. At one point it also came in as a special edition with burgundies, but I don't know if they're ever going to do that one again or not. I think that in terms of the quality of the lipstick product, in terms of it feeling uh, like it's really um, a special lipstick with really high quality ingredients in it and that if it feels and looked, looks really refined on my lips and that feels really elegant and then I think looks elegant. I think that this may be at the top of the list. So the ingredients in this are, are really good uh, including a, a substantial amount of cherry oil which I think is uh, makes a big difference in terms of the formula. Um, however, I haven't really used it all that much because it's kind of a pain to use. So I think it's kind of made to be used with their lip brush, but their lip brush is not really meant to be taken uh, on the road with you. It's really meant to only be uh, used at home. And so therefore, if I put this on, then I don't feel like it's very easy to do touch-ups. I could do it with my fingers, but I don't feel like this little selection of colors is really intended to be used with fingers. I think that's a good way to make it all messy. And I don't really like putting lipstick on with my fingers anyway. So I'm just a little bit perplexed what to do with this palette. I mean, I think I, sh I should use it more and I should use it up, but uh, it, it is quite expensive. So uh, it was a, a uh, luxury purchase to begin with. And I think that these cases that Westman Atelier makes, especially since it's not refillable yet anyway, uh, all of this is kind of frustrating to me. Uh, but in terms of the quality of the product, I'm really, really impressed with the quality of this product. I do really like it and I do have it, like having it on my lips. It, it feels like it's uh, a healthy thing to have on my lips that's probably more healthy than, than most of the high quality lip balm that I might put on it. So I kind of hate to have it at number five. Maybe I should put it at number one. But if something is going to be a number one, I feel like it should be something that I'm wearing on a regular basis. And I'm not quite sure what to do with this. Uh, maybe I should buy a cheap retractable lip brush and bring that uh, in my purse with me and use that with this. Maybe that would be better. Now the next three lipsticks are all very similar to one another and they were all released uh, during around the summer or so of last year. So this has been kind of the uh, inspiration for this video because I feel like although they, all of them have gotten a little bit of publicity, I don't feel like any of them have gotten the uh, attention that they really deserve considering uh, how different these are from all of the lipsticks that I've used in the past. So the first one that I have here is called the, the MAC Powder uh, Kiss uh, Slim Stick and this I have this in the shade Stay Curious. So like the MAC uh, Bullet Lipstick in the Powder Kiss form, this does have dimethicone in it. Uh, this one has vanilla in it. It doesn't have the artificial flavor or the saccharin in it. And I have found this lipstick to be so appealing in terms of how easily it goes on my lips and how pretty it looks. And there's a whole bunch of different uh, colors, many of the colors uh, that I have liked in the other MAC lipsticks. And so even though I'm not uh, crazy about vanilla, I think this, this formula is lovely. And I, I think this is by far the best uh, lipstick that MAC offers. And I'm really disinclined to buy any more lipsticks from MAC from now on because I like this one so much more. So I think this has been a, a real breakthrough and I've been really happy to have this lipstick. However, 
At the same time, uh, there's been a, a competitor, which is the NARS uh, Power Matte Stick. So I have this in the lightest shade, which is called Freebird. So this is not really all that saturated, but it comes in a bunch of other shades, and most of them are considerably more saturated. So if you're looking for a saturated lipstick, then this is uh, probably about the same as the MAC uh, powder kiss slim stick or, or maybe even more saturated and again I am so happy that ma that NARS is going to the trouble of making lipsticks that are really really clean now and some of their other products like their their most recent foundation uh, launch that one was also really clean so I'm really happy that uh, uh, someone in the the company is not uh, saying this is clean beauty they're not drawing attention to the ingredients lists but they are still offering products that I think are uh, perfectly well meeting my standards and that could perfectly well be sold as clean at Sephora or and their credo standards so as with the the Mac product I think that this one is really easy to put on. I don't need to put a lot of uh, lip primer on necessarily. I think the colors are really pretty. I've, I've looked at a whole bunch of the different ones in, in Sephora. So I am thinking that this would be a, a good product to buy more of and I probably will do that at some point in the near future. And then another product that's in this same category is this new lipstick from Say. Uh, so this is called the Lip Blur. I guess that Lip Blur is a new category of lipsticks. So they're, they're a little bit similar to the Glossier Generation G lipsticks. So I think that that was a real innovation at the time. A lipstick that's a matte and that doesn't look shiny, but that looks sort of like uh, you've blotted your lips or that it's not uh, real uh, aggressive in terms of the color. It's a soft and blurry feeling. And I think that this is a very similar feeling to uh, both the, the NARS lipstick and the MAC lipstick. I noticed on the label that both the, the Say product and the NARS product were both made in Italy, which makes me suspect that they're made in the same factory. Uh, the MAC lipstick, I don't have information on where it's made, so I, next time I go uh, to a MAC counter, I will take a look and see if it says on the box where it's made. But you know, the fact that they all came out at the same time and they're the same sort of feeling makes me wonder if there, a particular factory in Italy is making all these lipsticks uh, and that they, it's been sort of an innovation. They don't have exactly all the same ingredients in them, and for instance, the MAC one has silicone and the other two do not. But I think that in terms of the feeling and the performance of the lipsticks and sort of the, the idea in terms of what they're, they're looking like, I think they're all very similar to one another. And I like all three of them very much. And then counting down to number one, my favorite lipsticks are, wouldn't you know, uh, the Lisa Eldridge matte lipsticks. So these have been around for uh, maybe a year or two, and I think that these are really superb. So I have never uh, been very interested in wearing matte lipsticks on a regular basis, but these feel good enough to me. And I think that they look, look uh, really nice enough and interesting enough that it makes me want to wear them on a regular basis. So that's what I'm wearing today in the shade Velvet Muse, and I also have the Velvet Muse uh, um, lip liner and the uh, Velvet Muse uh, lip gloss with that. And I think it's a, a pretty look. Uh, I, Again, I'm not sure if I'm going dark enough uh, to uh, compliment my skin tone on the the uh, video monitor, but I do think that these are really all ter have been terrific lipsticks for me. So so far, I have uh, the Velvet Muse, which is which is this sort of semi rosewood color, and I have one that's Velvet Enchantment. And uh, Lisa Eldridge says that this is a shade that is supposed to be a red for people who don't feel comfortable wearing red lipsticks. And I think this has been a good uh, entry level red for me. It's just a little bit muted, and she says it's like a fairy tale red. So I have in really enjoyed wearing that one. And uh, it, it, all of these products make me really just make me want to buy more Lisa Eldridge products. 
The other shade that I have is in the Insanely Saturated Lipsticks, and this is called Sunday Matinee. So this is a shade, it looks like it's pink, it looks like it's kind of just an ordinary pink, but if I wear this outside, I'm like, well, that does really have a punch to it. So it has a little bit of color on the undertone that makes it a little bit more uh, shocking. I think that Lisa Eldridge is very good at, uh, certainly at the colors, and she also has put a lot of effort into learning about uh, makeup formulation, which is not the case for many people running makeup companies, apparently. So I feel really good about these lipsticks. They are pricey, but I feel like each one is like a little gem in my whole makeup collection, and it makes me really want to wear it and want to use it on a regular basis. So I would be, uh, I would be really surprised if I find another lipstick that I like better than these, but uh, I, it is good to have a variety, and I am particularly glad to see uh, the, the numbers two, three, and four, I also think are really excellent additions that I have really enjoyed wearing. Now there's two more matte lipsticks that I discovered when I was putting together this video. So I am going to try to purchase those and then talk about them uh, in a future video uh, on those products. So the first one is Pat McGrath. So that is a product line that I have not tried at all. And I always hear about their eyeshadow palettes and then I look at the palettes and they have aluminum powder in them and I'm like, I don't wanna buy that. But the, over the past year, none of the eyeshadow palettes that she has released has had any aluminum powder in them. And they also uh, have had less talc than in the past. So I'm kind of interested in her eyeshadows now. And in addition, I took a look at this, um, the ingredients for the matte lipstick, and those look good to me. No fragrance, nothing in it that I think is probably going to irritate my lips. And they do get really, really good reviews. So I, I uh, ordered a, a, a small eyeshadow quartet as well as a lipstick from the Pat McGrath website where they are having a 25 to 30% off sale right now. So if, if you've ever tried Pat McGrath, and if there's anything from that brand that you think that I should try, then let me know. I might order one or two more items and then do a whole video on Pat McGrath because it's, it's kind of an intriguing line. And people that know anything about makeup, they tend to think that this is a really special brand. So I'm a little bit interested in, in trying something for that to, from them just to see how it goes. The other product that I would like to try is from a new company on Credo called Gen C. And this is a clean, it's a cleaner beauty line. I don't know that they're any more clean than the NARS lipsticks, quite frankly. I think they're less. But in any case, I think that uh, this is a, a brand that uh, it's been getting uh, kind of mixed reviews. I've heard some uh, content creators uh, be re really critical of it. Other people seem to uh, like it. So I would like to give that a try too. So maybe at some point, if I can get a hold of some of those products, I will do a whole video on Gen C also because Credo seems to be uh, making it seem like it is one of their main brands now. So what do you think of my assessments of these lipsticks? Are there any that you have tried that you disagree with me on? Uh, are there any lipsticks that I haven't tried that you think that I should try? Uh, what are your favorite lipsticks? Uh, please let me know in the comments. Thanks. Thanks very much for watching to the end of the video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then please subscribe and then hit the bell so that you make sure that you see future videos from me. And Coco and I love you very much. Bye-bye. Say goodbye, goodbye, <laughs> goodbye. Go to turn this way. Oh, you are silly. All right, bye-bye. <laughs>